Hi guys, it's me Karen and we have come today to do a picture in Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson. And this is the book I'm trying to finish. So I thought I'd do a page in here today. So we've picked this page here. And it's kind of flowers with the little bubbles going up. And I want to do the background in black and then the flowers and stuff in the colors that we're working on in this book. Now I was going through my pages trying to find a page to color. <laughs> and I always let you know that we're doing this book in the colors blue, purple, pink, green, and then what are colors in black or white that I need to add in or skin color in case there is somebody in here that needs skin tones on them or say the birds that could use a little like um little beak in the crown colors key colors that kind of thing but i don't use those as a base color the main objects are done in the four colors that i picked there are some pages in here um let's see they were a set of pictures in here yeah, they're going to be back here. Okay. And they're in the set. Okay. <laughs> Trying to find these two. They do not have the blue in them. See, this one will have the um, pink, the purple, and the green. And this page also. Some pictures have the one color missing out of the four. There are a couple in here that have a color missing out of the four. This one does have the um, blue, purple, and pink, but no green. So you can do that also. I don't know if I have any other pages. I know there are a few in here, but we're gonna be doing this one. The flowers are going to be done, I believe it's like a pink here and then go down into purple, and the leaves are gonna be green. Not leaving me much room for the uh, blue, so I believe I'm gonna leave the blue out maybe just in a little shadow of the bubbles or something, but the background is going to be black. I'm going to use the Arteza black. It's a Mars black. This is their set that comes as matte acrylic paint. I use matte acrylic on the backgrounds, one, because if I want to color over them with the Prismacolors, the matte paint is the only thing that you can color over. White shows up really good on it. So I'm going to do the background in black. I'm going to use um, my favorite paintbrush. This is a black velvet, a silver black velvet number four. These are kind of expensive paint brushes. Uh, you can use anything that you are comfortable with. I like to have it because it has a fine tip on it and I can get into the tiny little areas here, but it does take a long time to get the whole background done only because it is a tiny brush. <laughs> so what I do is I just take a uh, plastic sheet. This is one of those that we got at the dollar store ages ago because I really have not been out of my house for umpteen months <laughs> since February, I'll put it that way. I've gone out in my backyard to get my mail but I've not gone to a grocery store or anything else like that. So, plastic sheet. It's cut into a small little area. We don't need that much of this paint. Um, you do have the whole background paint, but it, you're not gonna use as much as you think. So I always put a little blob down. If we can get a blob out of here. I'll put that much down. I do add a little water to this just because the paint is really thick. I do not water it down so much that um, it makes it translucent. We want to just make it easy to get out on the paper. So don't need a whole bunch on your paintbrush either. The water is on this side just in case I need to get this a little thicker. And then we just go down and pick a spot and start painting. Now I know this is going to be quite boring because 
I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of little areas to go around. And it's right up there with, you know, watching paint dry. Not the most thrilling things to watch on a video. But I did want to show you how I do it. This will probably, because I'm number one, not the fastest at uh, doing this, will probably take me about oh, an hour or so to get around all these little things. But I mean, if you have a different way of doing your background, if you don't want it black, you go ahead and do that. This is just my preferred on this page. I've done pages with a lot more detail on them. They turn out nice in the end, but you do have to put in the time and the effort here to get it nicely painted over. You also have to have a decent amount of vision <laughs> or get down to it really close because some of these details are pretty tiny and tight. One of the things that, I mean, the, I'm telling you all the pressure points of doing a background in black. I'll tell you one of the good things about doing a background in black. <laughs> Say up here, I'm not going to go around that. I can just paint over it. I don't need that one. If I want to put it back in, because this is matte paint, I can do those little sparkles with a white Prisma pencil on top of that. If this is too tiny to go around, the big ones aren't, but if you don't want to sit here and mess with all these little ones and go around them, try to get it to the edges and all that. If you decide you don't want to paint over it, you can put a little white dot in there. That's one of the nice things about the black or any background that you do in acrylic paint. You can always add those back in, but you don't have to spend an hour and a half going around them. If you want, you can even paint over the big ones and just use a um, stencil to draw in the circles again. So, you know, I've got a paper stencil that's about the size of these little guys, and you could draw them in on the white or on the black paint with a white pencil. I have a uh, plastic one that draws circles too. And you can find the perfect size you want to make that. It's probably where my thumb is. <laughs> right there and put them on and then it has little ones that you could put on there too. So you don't really need to spend as much time as I am going to by painting over all of these things. If you aren't good at remembering or knowing where you want your little circles, take a picture first then you always have a reference point to where the picture has those little dots that you are going to be painting over. And then you don't have to worry about it. But like I said, it's a tedious job to go around these little tiny things. And I am going to go over all of those. <laughs> so that's how I paint this. Like I said, this is going to take some time, and I don't think you want to watch me do this in its entirety. But when I am done painting the black on here, we will get back and I will show you what it looks like before we continue coloring on it. And right now, 
my construction group of people outside have decided to park all their trucks right outside my window. Another reason to pause the video at this point and do the painting off camera. <laughs> so I will see you in a bit guys. Okay guys, we're back. It's painted. I did go over quite a few of the little bubbles, but it's not going to bother me any. And uh, there was something I was going to mention. The Arteza uh, matte acrylic paint really does not need to be watered down. It's pretty uh, fluid on the paper. So I had to go over a section that I did put water in because it was a little more transparent that I wanted. So just keep that in mind when you're using this. You might want to use it just as it's uh, full strength. Okay, worked really well. And let's see. I thought I'd put a white pencil out here on my desk. I did, it's just hiding. So right around here somewhere was that uh, little one that was gonna go spray, 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 or shine or whatever. I'm just going to draw on here and put a a little shine on there. And that's what I mean when I say that the Prismacolor will go over this. And if you don't like what you put down, you can always go back over with the acrylic and paint over it. Did that even get in camera? It should have. <laughs> So if you put more pressure on it, it gets wider. But it will go over the um, thing. The matte paint is what I'm trying to say. It's been one of those weekends. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing I was going to get out, I thought I had one of those little tools in here. I do. Um, this tool has got a nice little round ball on the end. I think this is the uh, five millimeter one. The other end is a one millimeter teeny tiny post. These are the McGill um, for actually uh, making flower petals out of. You put it down on the paper, put pressure on the paper when it has a mat on the back, a foam mat and you can bend the paper up and make pretty little flowers with it. That is what this set is. A lot of these are sold um, from Frigonero decorating. I think there's another uh, set that's sold to do that with fondant in cake decorating. Anyway, any of those sets, if you want to buy one, will give you the same <laughs> things. So this ball here, I'm going to dip into uh, white acrylic paint and put in some of these bigger dots. So I'm not going to worry about that. I didn't paint that section, so hmm, I'll have to do that. <sighs> I'll always forget something. I didn't do terribly good over here, but at least I spent an hour painting the background. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is get out the... Uh, pencils that we use. We'll do the white acrylic paint at the end. I'm also going to splatter some little tiny ones going up and I'll show you how I do that towards the end of the video. Okay, this is my little pouch that holds all my Magical Dawn pencils. So we're going to get out the um, green ones. Uh, let's see, the last one is the putty. There we go. Man, they're all going to fall out today. No, I have the wrong one there. I need a darker. Moss green, putty beige, and green ochre if I can find it without them all falling out. Okay, where are you? green ochre. 
I had to replace these pencils because I use them a lot. <laughs> so we're going to do some of the leaves here first. And uh, do I have any of these kind of leaves in this book? Since this book has been used over, I mean, in the same colors, we can always go back and see if there is a, a leaf that was colored like that. And color them the same. Not really. Okay, so that's going to be the first one. Moss green. I'm going to go up the edge here. Put the need to be sharpened putty beige on the outside up here. And then go in with the green ochre. Back in with the green moss. Okay, add some green moss coming down, maybe a little up here. That'll be the putty, so we'll have a little light source on that, possibly. So basically, that's what we're going to do. On all these um, leaves. We're in a black sky. We're having the bubbles go up. We do have a light source on the bubbles coming from this side. So keep that in mind when you're doing your um, petals. If you want, you don't have to. <laughs> it's been one of those days, like I said. So I just want the top of this kind of going with the top of that to be the light lightest part. So it'll be like right up here, and then on this side, then it'll be on the top on these. So if you want to go through there and put your putty beige down, at least you'll know where your highlights are going to be. Okay, so it'll be like that all the way across on that side, up on this side. And then on this side of these. Okay. Moss green. Should I get you down a little closer so you can see what I'm doing? There we go. So the mouse green just in this side. And then the green ochre. And then you can go over it with the uh, putty beige. Make sure you get that blended in. Kind of go down go up on this side not much color on that one it's a tiny leaf
Okay, and then on this side, because we're on the back side of this, I didn't really put down a heck of a lot of the putty beige, so we'll be able to do that. Okay, the green ochre. I think I was doing all of these. off the edge of the book. If you know you're going to do that, you surely should put a piece of paper back there so you don't color the pages behind here. Okay, now we're going to bring in the putty beige again. I'm going to have to sharpen it though, because it's not very sharp. Okay, then we're just going to blend that up and in here. This one's so tiny. <laughs> and then if you like, sharpen up the other two pencils. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I didn't bring up my tea. Criminies. I always like to have my tea next to me so my voice gets all scratchy. I have something to drink. Which means I have to go back down and get it. <laughs> we'll finish these up first. So this is the uh, green, moss green. And we're just going to bring some of that back up in here
there. And I'm going to bring in the green ochre again. And just make sure it's all blended there. The corners are blended into the stem. And if you want, you can bring in a little black. <laughs> I giggle because I don't know where that is. And it's a tiny little pencil and it's on my desk. Tiny. <laughs> That's the number. <laughs> We're just going to add a tiny bit on each of the flowers that are coming into the stem. Right at the center part. Go back over that with a little of the ochre just to blend the black in. That's what our leaves are going to look like. Okay, so each one will be done like that. And we'll move up to one of the flowers. Let's move all these pencils over here so I don't try to grab the same ones. Got Parma Violet. One will come later. <laughs> Black Grape and Grey Lavender. Okay. Get you up toward the flower a little bit more. Hmm. We could probably put a little blue here, green on the stem, blue, purple, pink. So we'll do the purple in this area. So we're going to go in with the black grape first. Let's see. Light source. So we'll go on this side. Didn't paint there either. Missed a spot, missed a spot. <laughs> mm. I'll get the paintbrush out and redo this. So I'm putting heavy pressure on the darkest spot here and then just lightly bringing it all up into the center about a fourth of the way up or a third. It should be a third. Using three pencils, go up one third. <laughs> you can go up one fourth if you want, but then you'll have a lot more blending to do. Okay, then we come in with the Parma Violet. Go over all of that. And bring it up.
Okay, primal violet. Go over the whole thing and bring it up. Pretty heavy pressure on this one. You can leave a little line there if you want for the white and give it a little more oomph when you are doing the shading. Okay, we're going to go back in with the black grape. And a little bit of the Parma Violet. Okay, then we're going to add touch the white just on the tips there. There we go. If you don't think it's blended good enough, you can either use your finger or you can use a stump. Um, one of these little things here, which is just a blending stump. You can blend that a little bit better if you don't like the little white dots showing up. This does not have a solvent on it or, or anything. It's just the plain stump. You can use the Prisma blending pencil, <laughs> Karen Dash blending pencil, anything you want to use to blend it up a little better. Okay, all those will get the same purple effect. Then we're going to bring in the pink and we're going to use the black raspberry, rosy, beige, and pink rose. Kind of do the same thing we did down here is bling it, bling, bling in. <laughs> Bring in the black raspberry. Bring a little up into there.
So how are you all doing? I got to ask that earlier. Hope everything is going well at your homes with your families. There we go. Doesn't that look pretty? <laughs> I am going to have to sharpen these two pencils too. So we'll bring in the rosy beige. Okay, and then we're going to bring in the, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> pink rose. And just like the, um, Purple petals, we're going to bring in a little white just to lighten up that edge. Okay, we're going to go back in with the black raspberry here and just darken up these areas.
I'm just going to add a little something there because it was driving me a little me wanted a little extra <laughs> color there so that was the black raspberry and I'm going over it with the lightest color the pink just to blend that in Now I have to decide down here if I want to do that in the same green or if I want to do it in blue and I'm decided on blue so we're just gonna use the indigo down here And then the slate blue. And then the sky blue light. Now I would usually say something like you can leave a little area for white, but the sky blue light is really light. If you add white to it, you can barely tell. Okay, now that little place in the middle. We're just going to go in with the slate blue. And the sky blue light. Okay, go back in with the indigo and darken bottom here and right in here So now we have the blue and the pink and the um, purple, not in that order. <laughs> this is going to be green, so we might as well do that because, yes, we know where our green pencils are. I sort of know where my green pencils are. So we don't want it exactly the same color. I'm going to add um, the lime peel into this one instead of the putty. So it'll be the moss green, the green ochre, and 
the lime peel just to add a little variation to the um, greens. So that is your moss green here. Then we will put in the lime peel. And then the green ochre. And that will be our color. You can kind of tell the difference between the two. Hopefully you saw what I did. If you didn't, I'll have to do it again. We'll do it again on this one because I don't know if you saw that. So <laughs> we pull in the moss green. Kind of leaving this as our highlight because it's just a different shape and kind of would look fun that way. Okay, then we go in with our lime peel in that highlighted area. Then we go in with the green ochre. Add a little more depth in there. And there we have our stem that looks a little different from our leaves over here. All right, the only other thing we're going to do up here on this flower is I want to add uh, some kind of coloring in here. Which I'm debating whether I do a purple or a pink. Tippity tap go the fingernails. Um, since this is purple, we might as well go up purple. So we're just going to put the black grape down on the side where it's shaded here. Bring in the Parma Violet. And then the Grey Lavender. went over a little bit so we're going to add a little white up there just to get rid of that little piece okay bring in the black grape again and just darken that edge up Okay. All right. The little ruffle part is going to be done in black. I might even paint that in when I get the paint going back in the areas that I missed. This one doesn't even have a stem on it. <laughs> okay, so you've seen the main components. The flower done this way. Each one of them is going to be done the same way and the uh, little leaf here and the um, <laughs> two of the stems. They're the only two. This one doesn't have one. And uh, what I'll do is go ahead and I'll finish up the leaves and the flowers off camera and then when we'll come back uh, hopefully I'll remember to paint these little areas 
so we can get working on the bubbles up above. So I will see you in a bit. Okay guys, we did finish the, um, the greenery part, but I noticed the video is about uh, 50 something minutes long. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is end the video here for part one. I will finish these flowers off camera just like this one. All I did was uh, on this is add a little bit more of uh, defining marks on it in here just for the petal on the top. I didn't do that in the purple and I'm not sure if I can do this in black because it's too close to the black over here. So I might do that in blue or something, but um, we'll do that in part two. So when we come back, all the flower to this point will be done. <laughs> and then in part two, we will finish up the little detail parts. We're going to put stickles on this page along with the little white um, splatter on the top along with coloring in the bubbles. So that'll be part two. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next part. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Take care everyone. Bye now.